We are just outside the relegation zone. Just doing enough to keep our heads above water. But this relegation, you almost feel like it's to the point where it's inevitable now. And I really don't want to look at this game and blame the referee. I think we've got to blame ourselves. We've got to look at ourselves and blame this one as to why we didn't get anything out of this game. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another review of this miserable Oxford United season. And I just said in the intro, Oxford are hanging on by a thread to their League One status. Today, they were at home to Bolton Wanderers, a difficult game against a side pushing for promotion, pushing to get into the playoffs. It's a 14 match winless run for the Yellows. We have a, well, we're terrible away and we're terrible at home, but we seem to be particularly terrible at home. And let's just not beat around the bush. Congratulations to Bolton Wanderers. I think you'd be honest to say you rode your luck at times um, and, and clung on a bit in the second half, but it finished Oxford United nil. Bolton Wanderers won. And there are talking points. And boy, are there talking points. And one big talking point in particular. But we will get to all of that. Uh, like I try and do for every video, I will go over the team news. I will talk about the game. I will do those player ratings. And I will give my rather depressing final thoughts at the end. It is all time stamped. So you can click to any particular point of the video. And feel free to do so. But... I would just say, if you do that, please, can you hit that like button? And if you like the content, please think about subscribing. I am close to 600 subs, and it is about the only thing cheering me up is a subscriber count going up. So if you could be so kind, that would be great. And before we go into this all too familiar story for Oxford United season, let's have a quick look at that team news. Uh, Liam Manning unbeaten in his first four games, four draws, and that last one was a little bit of a disappointing one. We all were wondering, where the goals are going to come from well that has not been answered but there were some inevitable changes uh, Elliot Moore came back into the side after his concussion meant he missed the Port Vale game and Stephen Negru is the one who misses out not because of bad form but because he's having his face and teeth rearranged after that elbow in the face against Port Vale Gatlin O'Donka drops to the bench meant Kyle Joseph was up front on his own Brandon Fleming rather surprisingly started on the left wing Josh Murphy keeps his place which I'm sure you're going to have thoughts about that one. And Jovan Anderson was a welcome return to the Oxford United bench. Bolton Wanderers started the day in sixth. They jumped up to fifth place now. Well done again to you trotters. You travel in good numbers and you supported your side fantastically like you always do. And you always seem to beat us at the Kasam, you buggers. But we did obviously beat Bolton earlier on in the season. It was probably the best result we've had all season. But they, they are obviously a good side doing well in League One under Ian Everett. They are the Pizza World Champions as well, playing a 3-4-1-2. Typically do play three at the back and with those wing backs giving them that natural width. They did. Um, they are not in the greatest of form though and they did suffer a 1-1 draw against Cambridge last time out. Late equaliser from Sam Smith in that one, which didn't do much to help either side. And not certainly not us, that one as well. But they make five changes to the side that got that 1-1 draw. And it's worth remembering that we talk about our injuries, but this Bolton side has got its injuries as well. It's a decimated defence, but they're really struggling to uh, to fill that defence of anybody competent. Williams, Ndulo, Morley, Charles and Dempsey came into the side. Thomason, Mabetti... Sharati, what are these names? Jerome and Ad Abadabe Abadabeo. I think he scored the winner last year. I'm sorry. I'm terrible at pronouncing those ones. Um, just laugh at me and be kind in the comments. But yes, so, um, but not bad options to come back in. Obviously, Dion Charles is the leading goal scorer. Uh, Londolo up front, obviously going to provide a physical um, presence up there alongside Charles. Uh, Dempsey and Morley bolster that 11 as well mj williams starting his first game of 2023 and i thought other than giving away a yellow card i thought he did pretty well in the game and let's move on to the game i think it's fair to say bolton would decide that started the stronger in this match probably the first 30 35 minutes of this game they were well on top of oxford united but it was oxford who had the first chance cameron brannigan free kick from the edge of the box went straight at trafford get used to saying that that happened a lot 
And then it was Bolton who took the lead with their first chance of the game. And it was all too easy defending from Oxford's point of view. Robinson-esque defending, I would say, which hasn't really happened too much under Manning. Um, so it was a little bit of a surprise, but they were, it was far too easy for Bolton to get in down the right-hand side. Oxford left. Uh, Brady, uh, sorry, Bradley got away from Kieran Brown. He was able to get a shot across goal, which Eastwood could only parry out to Dion Charles, only about seven yards out. He was never going to miss. Oxford just couldn't get anyone close to him. And as I said, it was a sloppy start for Oxford. It was a good start for Bolton. And they really pushed Oxford back in that opening 30 minutes. The pressing was really good. Oxford really just didn't have any time on the ball. And um, without really creating a huge amount of chances, Bolton felt well in control of this game. I really just felt that Oxford just could, would do well just to stay at 1-0 and maybe Bolton would go into their shell a little bit in the second half. And we certainly did see that. Um, set pieces again were probably Oxford's best route to goal. Um, it was a from a corner, a second phase, which Brannigan put a ball in. Bindley, absolute hash of a header. He's unmarked and he just can't get his head on the ball. What is wrong with our attacking play this season? We just can't get anything meaningful on goal. And it just seems like it's a comedy of errors when we're in the opponent's box. But then on 38 minutes, the key talking point of the game happened. And it was Kieran Brown who just put a speculative ball over the top, which Kyle Joseph ran onto. Trafford came steaming out of his goal. Joseph got there before him. He poleaxed Joseph. We're all sitting there thinking this is going to be a red card and the referee produces a yellow card. And I want to have a discussion about it, really. I, I, I want to have a chat. I mean, this is just me from Oxford United point of view, watching the game live as an Oxford fan. I'm jumping around screaming, red card, it's got to be a red. Oh my God, what's he doing? It's a ridiculous decision. And of course, every Oxford fan is going to think that. And there's going to be a lot of staunch Bolton defenders that are never going to give any weakness to their side. And they're going to say, that, and I've seen comments already saying that it's not a red card. There's a covering defender. He's going away from goal. The referee's made the, the right decision. If you're looking objectively, and if you're a Bolton fan, I just wanted you to say this. You can have your opinion. That's fine. I'm really interested more than anything else because, you know, there's no the game's gone now. So we're only just talking about it. Um, I'm just interested to know if this was the other end of the pitch and Eastwood had come out and he poleaxed Dion Charles, would you be saying yellow card is a fair decision? That's the only thing I would say. If you're a neutral watching the game as well, I think you would probably look at it and say it's a red card. Look, I can understand that, yes, there is that argument of saying that there's a, I mean, maybe it's Williams who's defending, might be able to get to the ball, but it's unlikely having, if Joseph is able to skip over Trafford, that he is then likely to get on that ball with an open goal. I think the referees, I, I mean, again, look, I'm an Oxford United fan, so of course I'm going to theme from wanting a red card in that one. Um, and yeah, it, it could have changed the game massively, but again, from what we saw for the rest of the game, Oxford probably could have played till fucking Christmas and not scored. But it does also feel that we're just so sick of this run we're on we don't seem to be getting much rubber the green and this is just another one where it feels that the football gods if you like are against us with their decision making is this is this luck going to turn at any point? But it was then Oxford did wake up a little bit. The free kick, the resulting free kick was tame from Fleming. And it was Fleming again who had got in from a ball over the top from Murphy, about the only good thing Murphy did in the game. But again, it was a weak effort straight at Fleming. But at least that woke Oxford up. At least that woke the crowd up. And at least that gave some intent to Oxford's game. So all in all, not a great first half for Oxford, but as I say, it did get better in the final 15 minutes of the game. It, that key talking point aside, it did wake Oxford up. It did give us more intent. Um, we've seen that a lot from Oxford United's Liam Manning side, where we're quite lacklustre in the first half, almost like we want to remain in a game before we try and do anything in a game in the second half. And as I say, Bolton just played with a lot more tempo. They played like a side who wanted to win more than us, more more than anything else. They they were physical presence with Charles and Lundula up front. 
And they always had those out balls on the wing with the likes of Bradley and the likes of John where they felt they could stretch the play and stretch Oxford United. The second half was largely different though. And in the second half, it was pretty much Oxford up against Bolton's defence. I, I can think of Bolton creating one good opening in the second half. Um, and I think it was Dempsey who had a good chance where Bolton really did cut us open to make it 2-0, but he hit it over the bar. But other than that, it was very much Oxford in the ascendancy and very much Bolton just digging in and trying to get that away win. And that's fine. At this stage of the season, it isn't about style. It is about substance. And um, ultimately, Bolton go away from the Kassam Stadium with a 1-0 win. There were chances for Oxford United started two minutes into the second half with Kieran Brown hitting an effort at Trafford he could only power it away probably Oxford's best chance then a few minutes later fell to Kyle Joseph he is out of sorts in front of goal isn't he as the rest of the team is but good work from Tyler Goodrum who replaced Josh Murphy in the second half he got uh, Sam Long down the wing good ball in from Long Joseph's got to do a lot better. He's there first. He's only about six or seven yards out, but he makes a hash of a pretty easy finish to not even make contact with it is really poor. And again, Joseph had a he had a header a couple of minutes later, but it was soft straight at Trafford. Marcus Brown was the next to create some pressure, win a ball back high, but he could only screw, skew his shot wide. Just something that came to mind. It's almost just like a comedy of errors when Oxford get into the box. It's too frantic. Players either trying to take too many touches and then when they feel the chance is gone, they take wild swings at the ball. You saw Marcus Brown falling over at one point in a goal mouth scramble. And it all just seems to be reducing to players getting a ball from distance, having a pot shot and it just being pretty easy or very wayward. And you just have to ask yourself, for all the pressure that we had, did we really create that many chances in the six yard box did we really make that many chances at Trafford regardless of whether you should have been on the pitch or not any goalkeeper had to really stretch and make that many difficult saves I don't think that we did you had chances like Joseph skying a ball over the bar McGuane skying a ball over the bar Brannigan at the end and Goodrum shooting straight at Trafford happened so many times in this game Bolton Hang on to the clean sheet. I think, again, you'd be fair to say that you were hanging on in that second half. But that is an all too familiar tale for Oxford United. We lose a game 1-0. We give away a silly goal. We can't get back into the game. It's been a recipe for disaster all the way through the season. And when you look at things like that, which has happened time and time again, it's no wonder that we're 20th and hanging on by a thread. And I think it's time now to move on to those player ratings. And we start with Simon Eastwood. He gets a six. He didn't really have much to do in the game other than pick the ball out of his net. So I can't really give him much of a grade. Six out of ten for Eastie. Sam Long gets a seven. I thought he was Oxford's best player. I thought he did well defensively. And he was always a threat down the right-hand side, getting crosses in, trying to make something happen for Oxford United. He is probably my man of the match today for Oxford United with a seven. Kieran Brown gets a six. He was similar to... Um, long, but he did make a mistake for the goal. He hasn't made many this season. And again, he just was trying to make things happen in the final third, but just couldn't really make anything happen. Stuart Finley and Elliot Moore start with Stuart Finley. Stuart Finley gets a six. It's not really too much to say. They did okay. They did okay. Oxford weren't really tested in the second half very much. And the same with Elliot Moore. They did okay. They did fine. But this game wasn't really about Oxford defending as the game went on. Brannigan, I'm going to give Brannigan a, sec a seven. I do think he was constantly trying to get on the ball and make something happen. Trying a number of raking passes out wide. Some good balls played. Some good efforts from Brannigan as well in the game. He was the one guy, probably more than anyone, who gets the ball and he shoots. And I think he might score a goal. Not brilliant from Brannigan, but he gets a seven from me. Marcus McGuain, I'm frustrated with Marcus McGuain. It's so backwards. It's so sideways. He, it's so often he's just not taking risks. And that is probably a key thing for so many Oxford players. Just do not take risks when they're going forward. And, and yeah, he's tidy and he's neat. He didn't do much to really influence this game from an attacking point of view. And he gets a six out of 10 from me. Josh Murphy, I'm sorry, I have to give him a three out of 10. There was one good ball he played through for Brandon Fleming in the first half. But other than that, he just looks like he's constantly on the periphery of the game. He's constantly on the fringes. He never really seems like he wants to get involved. And when he does, he's far too timid. 
At least Yannick is Bambi on ice, but at least he will run and try and make something happen. With Josh Murphy, you feel like he's just taking the safe choice all the time, and I'm glad he got taken off. I don't think he should start the remaining games. Brandon Fleming gets a six. I actually thought Brandon Fleming did well in this game and probably unlucky not to get a higher grade. He came off after 56 minutes, which again, I thought was slightly unlucky, but he was a bit, they were at fault for the goal, him and Brown. But other than that, he did do well. Um, he got into some good areas. His finishing was a little wayward, but he did, again, look like he was going, he looked probably the most lively out of all the wingers that we had, which, which is a damning indictment to all the other wingers. Um, but he gets a six out of 10. Kyle Joseph gets a six out of 10. Um, it was unlucky. Look, he, look, he, 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 he won that ball against Trafford. And, and he, if he'd have been able to get over Trafford, maybe he could have tapped the ball into an empty net. But regardless, he did well to do, in that situation. Again, his effort and his work rate is really good. Again, he looks more comfortable when he's out wide. Made an absolute hash of our easiest chance of the game. And that is why he gets a 6 out of 10. And Tyler Goodrum gets a 6 out of 10. Some good things, but largely he did, was quite anonymous in the second half. Gatlin Odonka, I, I don't think he did well. He was too naive. He, too many simple errors in the game in terms of giving away silly mistakes. His touch wasn't that great today. It's really harsh. He's a good young player, but I don't think he was as impactful as he has been in recent weeks. He only gets a 6. Yannick only gets a 6. Again, he gets the ball. He gets it. He tries to run. He tries to make things happen. Most of the time, it's just a deflected shot that goes out for a throw-in or a corner or he gives the ball away. It's such a lack of quality, which is the common thread all the way through. Javan Anderson came on after 87 minutes. He doesn't get a grade. He came on too late. And that leads me to Liam Manning. And again, I'm going to have to give Liam Manning, like the rest of most of the rest of us here, he gets a 6 out of 10. Look, this, this is... This is one where a lot of Oxford fans can look at stats and you can look at numbers and you can say we were unlucky. We probably had more shots. We probably had more shots on target. Second half, we probably had more possession, XG and all that stuff. And, and it's probably just that thing of saying we were just unlucky not to score a goal. But how many times have we said that? The one thing I would say, I'd say generally his subs are pretty good. I don't think Josh Murphy should have started. But hopefully that, that's the final chance that he gets and he won't start the remaining games. But why is Tyler Smith at least not thrown on to this game? You've got two subs to make at the end. Why not make? Why not just bring Smith on? What's the worst that can happen? We just need someone that can take a chance. Maybe that's going to be him. He's not going to do it if he doesn't get on the pitch. But again, this was such an Oxford Robinson performance, really. And... <laughs> it's not really it's not his fault it's not his fault and i'm ranting and i'm raving it's not liam manning's fault for this for what's happened this season he's desperately trying to bail us out of it we're not dead and buried yet we've still got time this wasn't a bad managerial performance from him at all and um you know it's just disappointing six out of ten and that brings me to my final thoughts. And I'm going to start with the visitors and I'm going to start by saying congratulations to Bolton Wanderers fans. You always travel in good numbers, uh, good noise supporting your team today. And you got the job done. Good first half, I'd say, uh, didn't kill us off. But then you dug in in the second half and got that important win. It's not been great results for you. I know you've had like your... your your injuries and your problems. But at this stage of the season, as I say, it's about grinding out results and getting over the line. I'm interested to know your thoughts on where you think Bolton will, whether you'll go up, whether you'll get in the playoffs, whether you'll go up. And of course, you, I think most of you will be saying you've had a good season, you won a trophy, you're pushing for promotion. But I'm interested to know your thoughts on the manager, your thoughts on the game, and obviously on that key decision in the match. For Oxford United, first and foremost, we're not in the relegation zone. And that is the only positive that comes out of today's game. We're not in the relegation zone. We are just outside of it. Cambridge have found form and are flying 10 games, 10 points from 12. Wow. Um, didn't see that coming. But we are just hanging in there. But this is absolutely ridiculous. 15 games without a win. And we can blame referees. We can blame bad luck, but we have to just blame ourselves. 
That's the only thing, the only common denominator in this is Oxford United have been pretty useless for 15 games and we haven't been able to find a win. You, you Again, you can't even look at any game now and think we're going to win that one. You can look at those final three games all you want and say there's wins in there. But, but are there? Honestly, we've played everybody up and down the league in these 15 games. We've had so many winnable games and we haven't won any of them. So what makes you think we're going to beat Forest Green and Cheltenham and Accrington? I have severe doubts. We've got to get this win in the next game. We've got to beat Portsmouth next. Otherwise, I really don't think we're going to get out of it. But ultimately, why can't we score goals? This is the biggest problem of all. Yes, we've sorted out the defence. But as I've said, like Fence and Podcast, I listened to it this week and they said... The conceding goals has been comparable to what we've done in previous seasons. It's scoring goals. It's been shocking. The players are so bad in front of goal. They're so bereft of ideas. We just don't create many chances in the actual opponent's box. Most of the shots come from distance or from range. How many goals are you realistically going to score from there? Why can't we create clear-cut chances in the opposing penalty area. And when we do, why have we not got strikers good enough to take them? You, as I say, you cannot blame referees and bad luck. This is purely on Oxford United's poor recruitment and just the lack of quality from the players out there. And they've all got to take responsibility for it, whether it's centre-backs going up from corners or whether it's strikers trying to get in on the end of it. They're all culpable and they've all had poor seasons. It is scratching your head now to think where we're going to get a goal from. Liam Manning must be pulling his hair out. He has solved the problem with conceding goals. We do look a lot more solid, but I do not know where we're going to get goal scorers from. But I must admit, why has he not tried Tyler Smith at all? Surely he is worth a go. This is the guy that was supposed to come in and replace Matt Taylor. It's why Matt Taylor's not here and he's scoring goals for Port Vale. And he's not scoring goals for us. But what here is he? He's sat on the bench. He's doing absolutely nothing. Who's going to do it? Who is going to do it? I, I don't know who's going to come up and score a goal. We're literally going to have to rely on a, a mistake, an own goal, or some absolute worldie. Because we do not look like we're going to create many clear-cut chances in games. And really, at this point, sitting here, I don't see how we're going to get out of it. It might change. It might change. Let me know down below. Let me know your comments. Um, again, as I say, we can't just sit around blaming referees. But let me know your comments down below. Bolton fans, let me know your comments. Oxford fans, let me know your comments. Again, just try and give me some thoughts and perspective of how we're going to get out of it. You don't need to just write, we're crap, we're terrible, we're going down. I know those things. You don't have to remind me of how many games it is since we've won. I know those things. You don't need to remind me of how bad it is and it's Robinson's fault. I'm aware of those things too. And I also know the last win we had was a lucky one against Ipswich in the fog. I'm aware of all those things. I want you to tell me how we're going to get out of it. Who's going to score the goals and where the points are going to come from. That's the only thing that matters now. Portsmouth on Tuesday. Who thinks we're going to get a win? <laughs> Look. Try and enjoy your Saturday evening, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me on this terrible season. And um, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll be back to do a review of the Pompey game. Bye for now.